I don't need money anymore. And therefore, how much stress does that remove from your, from your life? Just breathing in the freshest air possible daily, growing your own vegetables, produce, grains, rice. You're eating the best food possible. This is our second farm, two fields, totally overgrown. To be honest, we don't come enough, so it's really wild. <laughs> Quite a lot of land to maintain by hand because we don't use any machines. But it's fascinating just seeing the things grow. I'd say that's the big pleasure you plant from seed and seeing the wild things grow. It just grows. Uh, I grew onions here, but the weeds grow so fast in Japan. It's mad. Uh, here's a carrot. Um, we're not talking huge carrots. Uh, we're talking quite a little guy. And, and the, the leaves are so t are delicious. It's like total carrot taste. Normally they're quite bitter. So the soil after a few years is adjusting to just nature. You need a lot of pots if you live in the countryside for all these fermented things. They don't make packaging like now like this. It's like handmade porcelain. And in olden times there was no fridge, that's why you have all these. And again, the potatoes we didn't plant them, they just grew. <coughs> Ta-da! There's a few. So no fertiliser, so they're going to be a bit small, but really tasty. Oh. Not too bad. Maybe 20 kilograms of potatoes this year. Many things you don't have to plant, it just grows. And this, look at this. Kabocha, Japanese pumpkin, it's just massive. And why is it massive? Because the goat used to live here. And then certain times of year, I just go and look for things to eat. Wild strawberries, I love those. My Trabant. <laughs> Tea is the best, especially when it's your own and it's organic and it's made with mountain spring water, so that's as pure as you can get. But what I like about the tea field is it's next to an ancient shrine, so you've got this nice positive energy from the past. I like the past, so it's perfect. At the moment we're just making small batches by hand, so you only harvest the top three or four leaves, at least I do. For cheap grade tea they harvest like quite a lot. The top three leaves it's like really soft, uh, you can it just plucks off and then that goes for processing in my big cast iron pan. And over the last four years I've been kind of perfecting my tea process based on the old way of producing teas using cast iron pot called a karma, huge pot where I roast the tea. So this house we bought it's in, in town, maybe it's like 500 metres away. And it came with this tea field. And after selling the house, we, we, we kept the field. So now I have, I have this huge field to maintain. How much was that house or that field? It was uh, six, 640,000 yen. So that's what, $5,000? This tea field was maintained by an organic tea producer. So that's really good. You have a problem with weeds in tea fields, but thankfully it's just one weed, one type. It's called Kazura, and it's quite easy to get rid of it. And you just kind of pull it. Not that many people do organic tea, because it's obviously more work. And also the commercial tea, they also, their favorite is Roundup. They, they literally douse the bush just before they harvest the tea. I mean, all teas are exactly the same, it's just in the processing. So this is the kocha, the black tea, and then the classic tea of Japan everyone thinks of is the bright green tea, and that's steamed. This isn't steamed, this is roasted. You can make tea at any time of the year, and I made it on New Year's Day. I went and picked, and that was also delicious. Bright, vivid green. So this is kocha black tea. 
Oh, that's good. <laughs> my dream for the rest of my life is to go nowhere. <laughs> Most people want to travel the world and see everything. I've just got it here on my doorstep. I don't need any more, anything else. <laughs>